Hi. In this video, I'm going to go over the data set that's going to be used for the next several hypothesis testing videos and used throughout all the different demonstrations of different forms of hypothesis testing that's coming up. So this data set is, comes from ERCOT and contains the power generation from different sources for two days from the Texas power crisis in uh, February of 2021. Those two days are February 14th and 15th, like sort of at the the height of the of the crisis, um, they, in, on the fourteenth, uh, ERCOT started shedding load basically in response to winter storms, uh, and so we can see how power generation fluctuates during that time in this data set. Uh, the data are contained in fifteen minute intervals throughout that time period, so a lot of data here. And aside from this data set, we know from other sources that the forecasted peak capacity during this time for wind was 6.1 gigawatts, and that forecasted peak capacity for natural gas was 48.4 gigawatts. What this forecasted peak capacity means is this is basically ERCOT's prediction of how much uh, power or energy would be needed from these two different sources, wind and natural gas, during this time frame to meet demand during this unseasonably uh, cold winter for Texas. So through, in the remainder of this video, I want to go through the processing of this data set. So uh, let's get to it. So we'll start by importing the data. I've got it contained in Google Drive. So I've already mounted my Google Drive. And, and uh, before I import it, it's always good to, to click on the CSV and open it up either in Google Sheets or Excel, of course, as we've done before. Um, and so here we see the, the raw data format of this data set. We've got our dates in the first column, the fuel type, biomass, coal, gas, so a lot of different sources here, not just wind and natural gas. And here we see two different forms of natural gas. So there's natural gas and then combined cycle natural gas. Settlement type, total energy, or total power, I should say. And then um, and then the, the times that uh, throughout the day, so starting basically at midnight and going out throughout the day, in which... Uh, power was generated. And then, and then in the cells here, we've got the different uh, amounts of power generated. And, and we know um, from ERCOT that these values are in megawatt hours. So <clears throat> let's get down to the processing steps. First off, we'll import the data set using, using the usual command here. Um, also good to look at just a preview of the data we can do gen.head to see what see what we have here. Look at the first five rows and last five rows. And we see what we saw in the in the CSV basically. So it looks like it everything um, was imported correctly. And also it's uh, not showing all the, the columns here. So we've we're just taking out you know some of the, the middle columns, but we can see that it goes up from you know 15 minutes after midnight all the way up to, to midnight of each day. Let's take a look at the, <clears throat> the column headers here. So gen dot columns. Always good to look at the column names. Again, date, fuel, settlement type, and then all the times throughout the day. Okay, all well and good. So our first order of business is to filter out some of these rows. So we want to focus on just um, just those two days, every 14th and 15th. And additionally, we only want to focus on two power sources, wind and natural gas. So we can filter based upon those two criteria. So let's make a new data frame. We'll call it gen fill for filter. Well, we can call it anything here. And our data frame is currently called gen for standing for generation, power generation that is. And then we want to filter this. So we'll have one filter or set of filters for date. And then we'll have another set of filters for power source. And so in date, we'll have, we have two dates to filter. And we'll separate those by an or statement. So it could be February 14th or February 15th. And so here we just need to say gen.date equals. And then we need to make sure we get the formatting exactly right here. And here it's useful to have this preview. And let's get by head here. We know what it takes on this format. So month, day, year. And we want to edit this to be either the 14th of 2021 
or the 15th of 2020, right? I'll do the power source on the, the next line here. Let me organize this a little bit better. And so our power sources, as we saw in the file, could be wind. So our fuel could either equal wind with a capital W, or it could be just gas, or we have that third type of gas dash CC for combined cycle. Okay, so let's make sure that that worked. Make sure we go back to preserve our indenting here, keep it organized. Oh, we have an error here. Series object is not, oops, I forgot a or statement here. There we go. Okay, and then we have it. So now we our fuel is only limited to gas, gas CC, and wind. Okay, that's all well and good. Next step is that um, we need to rename one of our columns here. Now this is just a particular set for this data set, but it turns out that um, what ERCOT calls midnight 000, um, this is going to be, they allocate this to, to um, say for example, February 14th, when really in reality, you know, midnight, um, belongs to February 15th, right? So so let's just change this to, to 11.59 p.m. or 23.59 when you're using military time um, so that it's attributed to the, the right day. But the reason for this is that the built-in date time tools in, in Python are going to think that 000 should belong to the 15th when really that data value that we have there is attributable to the 14th, for example. So. We'll just make this quick edit, gen fill, and we just need to rename. And we'll rename columns. And so our existing name, zero colon zero zero, should instead become 2359. So even though we're you know taking it back one minute, that, that's really not substantial enough to ruin our data set. So there we have it. Oh, this should be encased in squiggly brackets, of course. There we go. So moving on here, we've we're done with that. Now we can remove some superfluous columns here. So fuel, I'm uh, sorry, not fuel, but settlement type and total we don't need. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. So we'll continue just writing over gen fill. And so we'll say, we'll use our drop command to drop from gen fill some columns that are equal to, and in squiggly brackets, settlement type and total. So we don't need those for the rest of the analysis. And we'll just check on this. Always good to check and make sure that that worked. And there we go. We don't have settlement type. We don't have total. Now, this next step is a, a little bit tricky, but um, essentially we need to think about, so the, these first steps are you know, fairly straightforward. We can get rid of some extra stuff here and um, you know, filter out the things we don't need, basically. But ultimately, we need to think about how we want this data organized. So. And to do that, a good good um, good place to start is to think about what are the real cases here. Well, the case, or each individual case, is the power generation, and this is power generation from each source, on each day, at each time. So, if we're following our standard format of the data frame having one row for each case, we need to have these generation values all in one column. And we can have a separate column that indicates the fuel type and a separate column that indicates the date and a separate column that indicates the time. Turns out we're gonna combine date and time so that we don't have 
So, so we have this in one, one column here, but, but basically we need to distinguish each value here by those other columns, the fuel, the date, the time, okay? So in order to get it into that right format, to reshape what we currently have here into something that has those columns, we're gonna use this melt function. All right, so how we do this is, again, we'll just write over genfill, we'll replace this, and we'll call our data frame genfill.melt. So we're gonna use our melt function here. <clears throat> we start with our ID vars. So the, the vars that are identifying the cases. And so in square brackets, this will be the date. And the fuel. Our var name will be time. So that'll be unique for each one. And then our values, so our value name is going to be, sorry, the um, the time is gonna be a new variable that's gonna create, that's gonna take all of these current column headers, the different times and put them into this new variable called time. And then value name, we can call this generation. And we know from beforehand that these values are in megawatt hours. So we'll keep the units there. So it's gonna take all the values that are under these time columns and put them into this generation column. So in other words, just to summarize, so these ID vars are the current ID variables, um, date and fuel. So those are static, we're gonna keep those. All the other columns are gonna go into a new variable called time. And the values underneath those are gonna go into a new variable called generation, defined by value meaning, okay? So let's take a look and see how this has worked. And there we have it. We've got our new structure. So instead of a wide fat table, we've got a skinny narrow table. We've got date, we've got the fuel type, we've got time, and we have generation. So each of our cases here has a single row. And that's exactly what we want. Now, as I said before, we can combine date and time uh, so that we have something called date time that's gonna be unique for every case here. So we need to first import a package date time. Then we will create a new variable. We'll just call it date time. We could call it anything we wanted, but date time is pretty straightforward. And then we'll say from this pandas package, we need to, we're gonna use this function to date time. So transform something to a date time object. And the thing we're gonna transform is gen fill dot date, column date here, plus, and here I'm gonna put in a, a blank space, and then another plus, and then our time. So, so here we're, we're not only pulling in the values under date and under time, those current columns here, but we're also specifying the format. We're gonna take those and we're gonna separate them by a single space. So let's see what this looks like here. Go ahead and run it. And there we go, we've got a new column, date time. That's got the date, space, time, which is handy. Okay, so, um, and if we wanted to, we could remove date and time from this, um, but that's not, not necessary. One other thing we need to do is we need to convert our generation, which is actually in units of energy here, so megawatt hours, and convert this to power. And ideally we want this in gigawatts. The reason being is because we have our forecasted peak capacity in gigawatts here. And what we're gonna wanna do is compare the actual generation to these peak capacity values. So we need to have them in the same units. So let's go ahead and convert megawatt hours to gigawatts. And this is going to be 
here we're basically using the uh, stated the known uh, formulas or uh, unit conversions that we're going to enable here. <clears throat> so we'll start by taking these existing generation values. And we can see the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of these columns, uh, the, the commas that are in here. So um, if we took these directly, Python's not going to recognize them as numbers. We need to remove the commas in order for it to recognize it as a numeric variable. In order to do that, we will replace these strings. We're going to replace the commas with nothing. So the way this replace function works is we take our variable, we say dot string, this is referencing a string package, and we're going to use this replace function. We're going to take what we want to replace, the commas, and we're going to give it a second argument of we want to, what we want to replace it with, in this case, nothing. So that'll just simply remove the, the commas. We can go ahead and make sure that worked. And there you have it. Now we can convert this to be numeric. I didn't do the, didn't look at D types before, data types before, but um, if you did that, you'd see that this is actually a character column, character variable. So we'll say two numeric. So we can convert that to a number now because ultimately we're going to want to do some quantitative operations on this. So we need it as a, as a number. All right, so now that it's a number, now we can actually do the unit conversion. So we'll start here instead of generation and megawatt hours, I'm going to say the units are now going to be gigawatts. And what we'll do is we'll take our existing variable generation and megawatt hours, and we will divide by 0 0.25 because there's a uh, 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. So we're dividing by these hours to take it out of the numerator here. And also additionally, we're going to divide by a thousand because there's a, a thousand megawatts and a gigawatt. So we can make sure that that worked. And there we go. So um, we've got our generation in gigawatts here. And then we can, now we can clean up a little bit. Also, we can um, drop some of these unneeded columns now. So we'll drop columns. We can get rid of date. We can get rid of time. And we can also get rid of generation in megawatt hours. And this is going to give me some problems because I already ran that. But anyway, we can um, here we can put these in any chunk of code. Call rooms, and there we go. So now we have our cleaned up data set. The reason I got this error before is because I had already run these, and so now it can't find uh, it can't do this replacement because I already replaced it. So um, anyway, we've got our um, cleaned up data set here with just the variables we want, the field type, the date, time, and generation. One other thing we need to do is we've got gas and gas combined cycle. Let's combine these into just natural gas because these are two different forms of natural gas. We're going to lump them together because ultimately that forecast to peak capacity is considering both forms of natural gas and the generation data is um, segregating those two sources. So in order to do this, we need to first pivot our data frame. So let's make a new object called genpiv. And what we're going to do now is we're going to, we have something that's that's tall and skinny here, and we're going to make it a bit fatter. We're going to have separate columns for a fuel type here. So we're going to essentially do the reverse of that melt so that we can then do some operations on the two different columns. So we'll say 
we'll define an index here. Our index is date time. So our index is date time because that's a unique identifier for um, for these rows, basically. Well, combined with the field type, I should say. And then we're going to make some new columns that are based on fuel. And then the values for this new data frame are going to come from our generation in gigawatts. Okay. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So there we go. Now we have um, a data frame that has indices. So this is not a column right now. These are indices of date time. And then we have gas, gas combined cycle, and wind, and the values there are all in generation in, in units with gigawatts. Okay. So now we can combine gas and gas EC simply by adding those two columns together. So I'll make a new column here. Let's call it natural gas. And we'll take our gas column and our gas CC column. And we're just simply going to add those two values together. So we're going to aggregate them. Now, after we do that, the gas and gas EC are going to be extra. So we can get rid of those. So get rid of gas and gas CC since those are no longer needed. And let's see what we have now. So there we go. We've got now just two columns, wind and natural gas. And you know, we see that gas, gas CC, 7.5, 26.2, and add those together, 33.7. That's about right. Um, so, so there we go. Now we want to get it back into the form that we had before, where fuel was a column, not two separate columns. So let's melt again. Before we melt, we need to reestablish date time as a column. So what we're going to say is we're going to say from GenPiv, take the index and make it a new column called date time. Let's see what that looks like here. So we still have date time as an index, but we've also separately made it as a column here. And then from GenPiv, we can say melt again our ID bars in this case are going to be is, is going to be just date time and our values. are going to be in generation gigawatts. Go ahead and run that. And there we go. That's what we want. So we have a column of date time that has the dates and the times, fuel type, and then our generation values. Lastly, let's go ahead and visualize this. This is an important step for hypothesis testing is seeing what the data look like. This gives us a good idea of how to set up our, our subsequent hypotheses. So let's make a, a line plot here where we will have a line, one line for each energy source and, uh, and plot it over time here. So PG plot, we'll take our data frame gen piv and we'll have a line where X is going to be our date time and Y is going to be our generation. We need to get this name exactly right so it matches the column there. And also we want to specify the color in this case as fuel. So let's see what this looks like. There we go. So we've got our different fuel sources, natural gas in red, wind in blue, plotted over date time here. We can see natural gas is a lot higher than wind. So there's a lot more energy coming from natural gas than wind, just because there's a larger natural gas infrastructure in Texas. Although Texas does have 
comparatively large wind infrastructure compared to other states. Um, we will, let's clean this up a little bit. Um, I don't really like how you can't see the date and times here very well. So let's adjust our theme and make our access text on the x-axis a little more readable. We'll say element text and change the angle to be, oh, 75 degrees. You can see the effect of that. There we go. So now we can read the the, the dates here a bit better. Um, but it's it's cutting off the time. So let's, um before we do the theme, I like putting the theme at the end. Before we do that, let's adjust the, the date labels. And we can control the formatting of this as such. So we can say we want month and day. So we're only going to extract the month and day because they're all the same year. It's all 2021. So it's also all the same month. We could get rid of the month, but let's keep the month and day. And um, and we also want to include hour and separated by colon the minute. We'll put a plus here. So let's see the effect of that. There we go. So now we've got some time information there. So we have have the um, the hours and also the minutes displayed. So that's great. Let's also put in the capacities. So we have the, the actual production plotted here. Let's see how these stack up against our, our capacities. And so we can insert those capacities since those are essentially constant values over the whole time frame here. We'll put those in as horizontal lines. And if you want to do an H line, you need a, a Y intercept argument. So basically what's the Y value for that horizontal line? And so for um, for natural gas, this is going to be 48.4. And our color here can be red. And um, and our line type will be dashed. Let's make it a dashed line. And then we'll also do this for wind at 6.1 gigawatts. And then let's make this blue. Let's go ahead and see that. So there we go. Now, um, yeah, I don't really like how these are different shades of red and different shades of blue. So I'm pretty nitpicky here. If we wanted to control that a little bit better, we can say we can define our color scale for, for the, the curves, so for the lines. And we'll set some values. Let's switch this up. Let's say, so we'll, we'll have natural gas be the blue. And wind be the red. Doesn't really matter. There we go. So now the colors match uh, in perfectly in terms of shade, just how I like it. So, um, but the main takeaway here is that well, we can see natural gas is consistently below its capacity over this two-day time frame. Wind is below its capacity sometimes, and sometimes it's above it. So that's interesting. So let's retain that that thought as we go forward in the subsequent hypothesis testing. Okay.